This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. All right, let's let's talk about this Nick Saban thing. So Nick Saban, and I, I thought about this yesterday, and someone made it pretty clear to me after this weekend's events. I understand why security's beefed up a little bit, but Saban didn't have his credential and was not allowed into Radio Row yesterday, Tom. Saban had quite the day, right? So uh, that happened. And, and and as Laura Rutledge told it last night at the event we went to, uh, that Saban came back to the set and was talking about it and just said he, he appreciated that young man for doing his job, for preventing Nick Saban from walking in without a credential. Yeah, so that's one of the stories. Now, you have not heard this story just yet. Okay. So this will be a first time oh. for a lot of our listeners as well. Uh, Wally's going to have a column up. Uh, sh- sh- it might already be up as of this Should morning. Be. Okay, on Whole Hawk Sports. You give the, the second person, give it, give us the perspective that Wally told you on another interaction with Nick Saban. I'll try to condense it the best I can. Yesterday morning, I showed up at our spot in the main media room, and Wally asked me, how did you sleep? And I could see he kind of wanted to talk about how he slept. So I just said, pretty good, pretty good. I said, how did you sleep? Well, at 7.30, someone's trying to get in my room. He actually said 7.32. Someone's trying to get in my room. So he gets up out of bed with his boxers and goes and looks out the peephole, and it's Nick Saban. <laughs> That's hilarious. So Nick Saban has been given the wrong key. And they have this exchange, basically Nick Saban saying, you know, you're, you're in the wrong or making it feel like Wally's in the wrong room. And Wally's like, I'm Wally Hall. You're Nick Saban. This is my room. <laughs> you can read all about it in Wally's column today. And uh, a great case of mistaken identity. And it would have played well on, like, an episode of uh, Three's Company, Tommy, from back I, in listen, the day. Listen, I don't care who's in the wrong. If, if Wally's standing in front of me and nothing but his boxers, I'm out. <laughs> I'm back to the front desk. I need another room. Even if that is my room, I'm still out. If if all – if listen, I don't even need coffee that morning. Uh, <laughs> I need an antacid. If, if all I've got in front of me is – Wally Hall in his boxer shorts. I'm well, I'm out on that deal. Well, just to clarify, the security latch caught the door, so all you had was a crack. That doesn't make as good a story. <laughs> but, and I don't want to hear anything about his crack. So. The, but just, just a crack in the door was yeah. all they could see through. But Nick is like, what's going on in there? Like, wait a second. It's my room, man. Okay? And so he got that resolved, comes comes back down, tries to get in, gets his credential denied. So what a day for Nick Saban. Well, he's, he's used to having handlers. He's used to people opening the door for him. He's used to people, you know, going through. And ma- well, first of all, he's, and maybe Wally is staying in the penthouse suite, but I would imagine he's not, knowing, you know, just how things work in this media business. So uh, the fact that, that Nick Saban was trying to get into a commoner's room tells you <laughs> all you need to know about who was in the right or the wrong. So, uh, it made for a great column, and yeah. I, I got lots of laughs out of that one. Yeah, I mean, Nick Saban's used to having the whole floor to himself in a hotel. So, uh it's uh, certainly a different deal. All right, you sat through the entire day, four coaches and a commissioner yesterday in the main media room. What stood out to you in day one of SEC Media Days? Well, Greg Sankey had to address, you know, what's going on in, in college athletics. you got this big settlement that's on the brink of happening, and then what does that do? It, it leads directly to revenue sharing. And obviously there are not answers right now. And so he, he's he's brought up the point. You know, there's no easy button, and to me that stood out. I mean, he had he has he to said stay that all several there. times. So. He had to, and um, we we really don't know what will what will become of NIL after this. Is is it still a thing? So uh, that was one. Um, you know, Lane Kiffin. Um, I I think there's a lot a segment of people who think of him in a certain way, but with his father passing, to hear him kind of give a, a kind of a short testimonial about his father yesterday yesterday was touching and. They've built, um, they built a pretty good monster there at Ole Miss. But what I like about it is Arkansas has beat them twice. And, and really, two of the, ga- the games in Oxford last year and then three years ago, if Arkansas converts a two-point play at the on the last play of the game, yeah. uh, they're 3-1 and one against Ole Miss. So that's yeah. how close Arkansas is to maybe being in the same kind of boat Ole Miss is. And I like where Arkansas is at on Ole Miss's schedule following OU and ahead of, I think it's A&M or – Florida, they've right. got a tough stretch in there, and you you know it's easy to say Arkansas is the easiest game of like a four game stretch, but they've got to go on the road to Arkansas after playing Oklahoma. I I like where Arkansas is at in the schedule. Where Ole Miss's stretch is is very difficult in that back half. I wholly agree with you because the first half is the easy part, and I looked at Missouri's yesterday. Missouri's oh. whole schedule is the easy part, but anyway, um, you're right. Um, the, 
not not a lot of tough games in the first six, maybe an open date, and then Oklahoma and then Arkansas. And how often do we say it sets up well for Arkansas? This is one of those rare years where things do – the schedule's a little bit more forgiving, I guess. Yeah, you, yeah. you don't really naturally have, like, a solid locked-in home win because of the potent – but your road games are first-year coach in Mike Elko and Jerry World, first-year coach in Jeff Levy in Mississippi State. Missouri is not going to be easy. They have the easiest schedule in the SEC, as you just referred to. And – Auburn, which is in year two of Hugh Freeze, that's not murderer's row compared to going on the road to Georgia or Florida in years past. It does set up from a road vantage point. You know, there's so much turnover with personnel, so there's a lot of unanswered questions that we're going to have. But you're right. uh, If they could catch a break or two that they just haven't been, maybe maybe they can win a a road game or two. And then just, you know, make it it a better season because I think the fans are – Wanting to see like a return to 2021 where you're upsetting people. So yeah. uh, you, we were talking about Nick Saban earlier. Lane Kiffin not only made reference to his late father, Monty, but he also made reference to coach there talking about rat poison. There's a lot of rat poison surrounding Ole Miss this year based on who they brought in, the expectations. I think they're probably either going to be picked um, third or second in the SEC, to be frankly honest. Mm. How do you think Lane handles that with differently being the – hunted rather than the hunter yes a di- quite different position than Ole Miss is used to I, I, I think I've got Lindy's magazine they have him fifth in the country uh so I mean this wow. is this is big time rat poison for them uh you, when you have a quarterback of Jackson Dart's um stature who's who's already produced in the system and then you fill in with uh, a lot of good receivers now th- they do have to build back up at running back after losing Quinshawn Judkins but uh, it, uh, they brought a lot of portal talent, and Walter Nolan on the D front is going to be one of the probably the best interior guys in the conference this year. They got Chris Paul at linebacker, so um, the, the pieces are in place. If the, if there's harmonious, uh, uh, you know, togetherness on the team, that they could be very good. Tom Murphy with us here, live from Radio Row. It's presented by the Arkansas Beef Council. Yesterday, I thought the questioning was. Fairly benign. Uh, we haven't seen any hot, what I'd call hot seat coaches. Won't see any today. Sam's going to be here on Thursday. Job security and futures certainly inbounds when talking about Arkansas's uh, head football coach. Do you think the questions go there? I, you know, yesterday there wasn't a need for it with the coaches you had in front of it. Won't think we will hear it today, but. Sam's on that short list of coaches that the future's uncertain in this league. Absolutely. Him, Billy Napier, uh, with the Florida's brutal schedule coming up this year and, and what they went through last year. I, f- I actually feel for them how tough their schedule is. And then uh, Clark Lee at Vanderbilt. I mean, that was at the end of the day, day yesterday. And um, just not a whole lot. No one's lot. hyper-focused on the job security of the Vanderbilt. No, program. they're really not. But he's obviously on, the, on that hot seat. I would think that when we have our morning um, – uh, beat writers type get together that we'll we'll ask Sam those so it might take a national or just somebody who's interested in Arkansas program to ask Sam at the main podium about you know got, getting through last year when they were so so tough in the early and mid part <clears throat> and then and then had the the blowouts at home and then just a very very ugly performance against Mississippi State well, at home and I, I can't imagine those questions would blindside him or or you know, surprise him to get those surely that, you know, he's prepared himself mentally on how he wants to respond. And um, kind of the, the unusual dynamic is I think a vast majority of the fan base want him to succeed. They like Sam Pittman. They want him to be the coach for the next two, three, four years, but you got to win to stay. You do. And uh, I think I've talked to you guys about this a little bit, but I just think it's so important for Sam Pittman for the state to like him, you know, for people to look at him and, and th- want to look him in the eye and, and see and acknowledge that he's he's doing a good job. He's doing the best he can. Uh, so 21, you know, he he was very happy. He as he said, Arkansas fans can stick their chest out, be happy that w- what we did. They won all their trophy games and a bowl. They haven't won a trophy game since then. And so he kn- he knows that there was negativity late last year. I think when he when he's when it's all said and done, he would like to go to Hot Springs and be thought of more as a guy who got Arkansas football to a certain place, um, and they're proud of what he did as opposed to he he, he retired after a couple of really bad well, years or was fired. And if you told me the 50-50 plays this year go his way in enough games to get him to 8-4 and four, and he retired and walked away on 8-4, and four, I wouldn't be floored by that outcome. Absolutely not. That, that might be uh, a best-case scenario. 
type thing for him, right. and and why would that not be in the realm of possibility? Because I think I think he, I think the finish line for him was in sight when he got the head coaching job at Arkansas. You know, like okay, here's yeah. my here's my glide path toward retirement. Now he's getting the huge money, and so uh, at any time, you know, if if he has a big season, maybe he would consider that. Well, I'm talking with Tom Murphy live at Radio Row, one of. The reasons you were so good in 2021 is you had an All-American wide receiver and NFL guy in Traylon Burks. Tom, uh, again, we're 44 days out, I believe, till yep. UAPB in Little Rock. Um, what does that wide receiver core look like coming back with 93% of their pass catching? I mean, wh- who are you? What are you forecasting with Bobby Petrino this year? Well, I think you're going to see a you know heavy dose of the guys we know are going to catch. Yeah, Andrew Armstrong. He he may not be quite Traylon Burks, but he 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 makes one-handers. He makes them in yeah. traffic on the sideline. He's got the whole package. I just think that we're going to see, because of speed, if you get the ball to the speed guy, and this is where Dan Enos absolutely failed last year, Isaiah Satania, we saw all during camp and during practices, he was getting the ball on tunnel screens and all these things that if you get the ball in his hands, he might break, and it didn't happen in games. And that's what you heard Sam Pittman utter that frustration late in the year. We're not doing what we're practicing. Yeah. So I think we're going to see him get in. I think we're going to see young C.J. Brown catch – a few passes like that. That kid can play. He can't. And, and then um, and then when you're doing that and you're successful, maybe your safety start creeping up, and then you can get better one-on-one coverage with Armstrong and the others. So as much as I'd like to think that Arkansas has a chance to play in Atlanta, it's not going to happen this year. I, it, I think the probably the thing I took away from Greg saying the most yesterday is I still don't really know what the SEC tiebreaker is going to be, right? I mean, we're yeah, – That was a little we're, surprise. We're in, July, we're in July. It's, what, July the 16th? And we're only a few months away from the SEC championship, and we haven't finalized that yet with a 16-team non-division league. When that question was asked, I'm like, you, I was a little bit floored, well, like, whoa, I, but, I didn't know this. But you've got two new league members that need to vote on that that just became members 15 days, 16 days ago, whatever it is now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so in fairness, uh, would you want to vote on a tiebreaker affecting this season when they didn't have the right to vote until July the 1st. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> it should have been hazy. They shouldn't have been allowed I, to vote on anything. I understand <laughs> that, but I think something as as important as a tiebreaker system has to be done with your with your full body, and I think that's one of the reasons that probably hasn't been completely That's a very yet. logical answer, and considering yeah. Texas might be one of those teams, that's probably – probably a reasonable response. It's a too. fair point, too. He said they were going to have an AD zo- like yeah. Zoom meeting in it's two soon, weeks. So. Yeah. If you don't have the clear-cut head-to-head, and uh, and then you, I think the next one you would have to be your record against the you know the top – you know what I mean? Your your combined record against the top team and start yeah. going down from there. And then if there's some ties there, I think you got to go with, uh, you know, strength of schedule, the computer formula stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so – well, Tom, uh, it's going to be an interesting next few days. Arkansas is on the final day, and uh, we'll await Sam Pittman and his uh, three players and really get to know more about Trailing Green this week. So. Yeah, we, yeah, we will. Um, he he seems like the team really likes Taylor Green, and uh, the times we talked hey. to him in the spring, he seems like a cool dude. The seventh fastest quarterback on NCAA football. The seventh fastest. Yeah. So he's got that going for him. Of the three of us, I, Ty was the one to know that yep. one. Yep. Yeah. All right, Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat, is at Whole Hog Sports with us every Tuesday and Thursday in the morning rush. Tom, good to see you in person. Same here, guys. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code believe that's b-l-e-a-v for your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit bet online where the game starts